I'd like you to just turn to somebody beside you and say, what's your expectation from the Lord in this service? Turn to the other person on the other side and ask him or her, what expectations do you have? If you do have an expectation, please raise up your right hand. If you have an expectation, raise up your right hand. If you do have an expectation, raise up your right hand. I'd like you to tell the Lord what you expect of the Lord in today's service. Please just do that. Tell the Lord what expectations you have of the Lord in this service. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. Early this morning, that was what the Lord dropped in my spirit. The ears of the Lord are open unto this service. If you are not praying, I wonder what you are doing. Simple instruction. Lift up your right hand and tell the Lord what expectations you have of the Lord for today's service. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. This is your moment. Even before we go into the message, the Lord is already waiting to hear from you. Lift up your voice. Cry to the Lord about somebody in your life, about something in your life. Cry to the Lord. By faith on heaven, stable land, where love and joy. I have a desire. And like the Lord, Lord, Lord plant my feet on desire there is a eye there is a level there is an experience that my heart craves for oh lord lift me up lift me up oh lord this is another breakthrough our service lord let this service be for me let the grace of god avail for my lifting up By faith on heaven, stable the place of the fulfillment of others, that place that the Lord has commanded blessing, that place that the Lord has commanded honor. Cry to the Lord, cry to the Lord for your husband, for your wife. For your parents, for your children, for the words of your head. Yes, Lord. Lift up your hands, lift up your voice. This is the moment. This is your moment. Grace is 
heaven and earth. Help us come your way. Let somebody cry to the Lord. Let somebody say, Arise, O Lord. Remember me for salvation, Lord. Yes, Lord. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Pour out your heart. Pour out your soul. Today is your day. This day's breakthrough our service is for you. Upon this Mount Zion today, you must enter into that your possession. Not by power, not by mind. On top of this mountain. On top of this mountain. I say on top of this mountain, in this hour of prayer, in this 11th day of June, the grace of the Lord will bring your salvation. I say this is the hour of your remembrance. I say this is the day of your visitation. In that name that is above every other name, the Lord will put an end to that reproach. The Lord will put an end to that shame. Help we come your way today. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. The Lord told me early this morning that I should ask you to ask him for help. Ask the Lord for help. mighty name we have prayed before I say the word that the Lord dropped in my spirit to pronounce over your head I want us to employ a Bible principle the word of the Lord says that God giveth seed to the sower and after that phrase the Bible now says God gives food or bread for food. A seed will precede a food. The destiny encounter vision is on its way to Bangladesh as I'm talking to you. That's why our pastor is not here and his wife and a number of the ministers. A team left on Sunday. Another team has left this morning. And I'm aware that after this meeting, the third team will be leaving. I want us to sow a seed of committing this program unto the Lord. And I'm telling you, brethren, as we sow in passionate prayers for the success of that program, you see that which you have just asked the Lord that is your expectation? The Lord will give it to you as food. Yeah. I said the Lord will give you to you as food. I want us to lift up our two hands and let us thank God for the destiny and counter vision. Lift up your voice and begin to give thanks to the Lord. Thank God for betting this vision. Thank God for giving the vision to our pastor and his wife. Pastor Peter Balogun and his wife. Thank God for the destiny and counter vision. Remember God give it seed to the sower before he gives bread for food. This is your opportunity to sow for your expectation. Lift up your voice and let us thank God. Father, we thank you for the destiny encounter. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the batting of this vision. Thank you for the reach of this vision. Let us thank God for all the souls, all the families, all the nations of the world that the Lord through this vision has impacted with grace and the gospel. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Let's thank God for the past success. Let's thank God for the success of the destiny encounter. 
the past editions both in Nigeria and outside of Nigeria. Thank God for souls that were saved. Thank God for the miracles that happened. Thank God for the testimonies of divine encounter. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. I just want you to hold your neighbor's hands. Let's agree. The secret of the success of Jesus was that at the beginning, the heaven over that city opened for him. The Bible says, as soon as he came out of the water, the heavens opened. And grace to succeed in that location came upon him. I'd like you to hold your neighbor's hands and let's pray. Say, Father. Father. I can hear you say, Father. Father. Remember, that is your seed. Somebody say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. Let the heavens over Bangladesh open for the destiny encounter to succeed in the declaration of the gospel. Lift up your voice and pray. Let the heavens of Bangladesh open for the destiny encounter to succeed. Let the heavens open. Let the heavens open. Let the heavens open. Let the grace of God. Let the anointing of the Lord. Let the gift of the Spirit rest upon the destiny and counter team. And let the mission of the gospel preaching that they are going forth to declare succeed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name, we have prayed. We are still holding our hands. Thus saith the Lord unto his ministers that at that moment I will give you what to say. I want us to agree that the gift of divine utterance, the Bible says, when the Holy Ghost came down in Acts chapter 2, the apostles spoke. As the Spirit did what? Gave them utterance. I want you to hold your neighbor's hands and let us agree that in the mighty name of Jesus, the gift of divine utterance of the gospel, let it rest upon every minister that shall be ministering in Bangladesh under the destiny and counter platform. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. The gift of divine utterance. Lord, we pray. For the gift of divine utterance, let it rest upon every minister that shall be ministering. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say with me in agreement, say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in agreement. As a church, we bring before you the destiny encounter team under the leadership of Pastor Peter Balogun. As they step into the land of Bangladesh, oh God, let the land yield this increase. Let the land of Bangladesh, let the land of Bangladesh, let the land of Bangladesh. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Yield souls to the kingdom of God. Surrender souls into the kingdom of God. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Let there be a surrender. Let there be a release of souls. Every soul that is in captivity. Every soul that is in bondage. Every destiny that is dying. Every destiny that is vandalized. Let them be surrendered unto the gospel. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The Lord said we should not be ignorant. That the enemy of the gospel has devices. Some of them are physical, 
Some of them are spiritual. But whatever be the devices of the enemy, we have a name that is above every other name. I want us to lift up the name of the Lord. Say, we say Father, Father, in that name that is above every other name, in the mighty name of Jesus, we cast down, we destroy by fire any weapon, human weapon, spiritual weapon, political weapon, any weapon found against the destiny encounter in Bangladesh, we cast them down in the name of Jesus. We cast down the weapons. We cast down the powers. We say they will not prosper. We say they will not succeed. No weapon formed against this vision shall suffer. No weapon formed against this vision shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against it we condemn. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The Bible talks about doors of ministry being open and also talks about adversaries arising. For every level, they say there is a devil. This is the second time of destiny encounter in Bangladesh. To the glory of God, the devil of the first time, God gave us victory over them. Let us therefore raise our voice again. That in that name that is above every other name, this second mission to Bangladesh, every devil from the pit of air that is against the name of the Lord being glorified, what are they waiting for? By the judgment of fire, let them be judged in Jesus' name. Say, Father! Somebody say, Father! Let a believer say, Father! In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood 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 of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, we overcome, we overcome, somebody say we overcome, we overcome, principalities, we overcome powers. We overcome spiritual wickedness. We overcome in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We overcome. We overcome. How are going for shall be in success. How are returning shall be with jubilation. We go forth in the name of the Lord. We shall return in the name of the Lord. We go for bearing the seed of the gospel. We shall return with harvest of souls into his kingdom. By the grace of the Lord, through the blood of the Lamb, there shall be the miraculous in Bangladesh. I said, by the confirmation of his word, we say it's a wonders. Nations will give their life to Christ. Families will give their life to Christ. Government will give their life to Christ. Yes, Lord. We shall not return empty and oh by the grace of the lord plenty shall be our harvest by the grace of the lord plenty shall be our harvest the kingdom of the lord is come the will of the lord will be done the glory of the lord will be established in the name of jesus christ finally i want us to agree there shall be no casualty oh somebody say with me say father for every soul that is gone to battle for every soul that is gone to battle, Father, bring them back safely. There shall be no loss. There shall be no injury. There shall be no setback. Let us begin to pray to the Lord for their protection. We commend every man, every woman. We commend every soul that is gone, even unto the word of grace. Father, go with them. Father, go with them. Father, be with them. 
Let them go forth in peace and return back in peace. There shall be no casualty. There shall be no injury. There shall be no loss. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, we thank you. For we are reminded now by your spirit of your word that whenever you begin a good thing, you will be faithful to complete it. We thank you, Lord, because our eyes have seen the beginning of a good thing. And Lord, we thank you because our mouth will testify of your completion of it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we want to use this platform to thank you for everyone that you employed to make it possible for a team to be successfully sent to Bangladesh. Father, because they are used of you to support this vision, in their times and places of needs, let men be available for them in Jesus' name. Everyone that has supported the vision with money, everyone that has supported the vision by going, and everyone that has supported the vision by praying, in their times of need and concerning their own destiny and vision, Father, raise support for them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord, because you have given them a seed and they have sown, Father, they have qualified for food for bread. In that name that is above every other name, I say receive your bread for food in Jesus' name. I say receive your bread for food in Jesus' name. Whatever your heart desires, as you have mentioned before the Lord on this mountain, in proportion that is exceeding abundantly, above all you could ever think or imagine, according to the power that is at work in this heaven, you receive now in the name of Jesus. I say you receive now in the name of Jesus. Because you have partnered with the Lord, the Lord will continue to partner with you. Because you have helped the work of man, because you have helped the work of God amongst men, men will never cease to help you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, if you believe the Lord has answered your prayer, turn to two, three people and say, God is good. God is good. God bless you. You can please take your seat in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. This morning quickly, or this afternoon, I will talk briefly about my shield and my buckler. The topic that our father said I should speak about is my shield and my buckler. Of course, that's referring to the Lord as our shield and our buckle. Let's look at a scripture. Obviously, that's the only one we will take before we close. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 20. My shield and my buckle. Happy are thou who is strength. Who is like unto thee O oh, people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency, and thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shall tread upon their high places. Beloved, life is good. And the intention of God is that unto everyone that is made in the image and the likeness of God, they should have life as a good life. But the painful reality 
is that there are in this world, in your space, certain matters, human matters, spiritual matters, that have persuaded themselves that until they take that which is meant to make you enjoy a good life and hard unto themselves and leave you empty, their home is not going to be enough for them. It is such people that the word of the Lord refers to as your enemies. Any entity in your life that exists with the intention of denying you the things that should make you enjoy a good life, that's what the Bible refers to as an enemy. But in this Deuteronomy 33, 29, the word of the Lord is coming to somebody. He's saying, for that man that will make the Lord his shield. Three things. He said, happy will that man be. Secondly, he said, that man in the midst of others will be incomparable. He said, who is like unto thee? Who is like thee? Israel. So one, when a man makes the Lord his shield, that man will be made happy by the Lord. And I want to quickly say to every soul seated there, because you have come today, may the Lord God Almighty cause you to have that which will make you to be happy today. In Luke chapter 7, we read about the widow of Nain. The enemy had just taken her husband. And not long after that, the enemy came again and took her only son. To take her only son without a husband is to take her future from her. How sad that woman must have been. How grieved her soul must be. And the Bible said a multitude gathered around her to follow her to the graveside. And suddenly, the Lord surfaced. I'm persuaded concerning every soul here that you're coming to this meeting. The Lord will give you an encounter with salvation. I said the Lord will give you an encounter with salvation. From a sorrowful, sad woman, on the strength of a meeting with the Lord, by what the Lord did for her, the Lord changed her testimony to that of a happy woman. The procession that followed her morning, the Lord turned it around to become a celebrating procession. I want to agree with the word of the Lord for today. And I want to stand in agreement to declare concerning you. Everything you came here conscious of as a thing of pain, the Lord will turn it around to become something. A thing of gain in Jesus' name. Happy is the man that maketh the Lord his shield. What's a shield? A shield is a protector. Happy is the man that runs to the Lord in the times of storm. You know what you have to leave behind to be here this morning. Why did you come? Because somewhere in your heart, you believe that God can fix a matter for you. I'm agreeing with you at that realm in your heart where you are looking up to God. Whatever be the matter that you desire the Lord to fix for you, in that name that is above every other name, before the end of this service, grace will appear from heaven and it will fix it for you in the name of Jesus. Brethren, I'm believing God. Like that sister shared in the testimony, a lot began to come in. 
that what the Lord will do for you before the end of this service. The end of this service will bring you into the manifestation of it. One reason why rapture will not take place until after this service and until after you have received a testimony is because you have believed in your lifetime you will have an enjoyment of what you have believed in Jesus name. Happy the Lord said is that soul that runs to the Lord. We read about the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years, that woman had run to different physicians for help. And each one of them did not only collect money from her, they left her worse off than when she met them. Until one day, somebody spoke to her about the Lord. And she came to the Lord the way you have come today. And the Bible said, one meeting with the Lord, affliction of 12 years was ended in one meeting. I am prophesying it to your life because you are in this service. Whatever be that thing in your heart, whatever be that deformity in that your body, because you have appeared before the Lord with that body, before the end of this service, you will look for that disadvantage. You will look for that deformity. And you shall see them no more in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord said, happy. Happy are you for making him your shield. The second thing he said there is incomparable. Who is like this nation Israel? Who has made the Lord his shield? Incomparable. Incomparable. When they look at you after this meeting and they want to compare the testimony you are stepping into and want to compare it to the testimony of other children of your father they will see that you are incomparable. When they want to compare your output in business to other people that are in the same line of business with you, they will see that there is no basis of comparison. When they want to compare women in the family that you married into, they want to start comparing them with another. When it gets to your name, they will see that concerning you, there is no basis for comparison in the name of Jesus. When they want to begin to compare children, they want to begin to compare children. In school, they compare children by examination. In places of work, they are compare people by appraiser. When they want to begin to compare your own children, by virtue of the result your children will come with, it will be written that your children are incomparable in Jesus' name. Because you demonstrated your trust in the Lord by coming for this service, because you demonstrated your trust in the Lord, by sitting where you are seated, according to the word of the law, he that has made the Lord his shield shall be incomparable. I say you are incomparable in Jesus' name. That scripture says, number three, not only will the Lord make sure that you live forever happy, not only will the Lord make sure that whatever brought you here crying, the Lord will make sure you live here laughing and dancing over there. The Lord will make you incomparable. Number three, that scripture says, whoever makes the Lord his shield, the Lord will make your enemies to be found liars. Did you hear that? He will make your enemies to be found liars concerning you. See, cancer is your enemy. Arthritis is your enemy. Fibroid is your enemy. A, an ungodly appraiser is your enemy. Late marriage is your enemy. Ancestral causes is your enemy. 
that when the Bible says, God will make your enemies to be found. Look at that word found. Meaning, it will be openly revealed. That the report of the doctor is a lie concerning you. It will be openly revealed that the divination of the witches and the wizards is a lie concerning you. Because that very thing they say you will never do. Because that very eye they say because you are of this tribe, because you are of this gender, because you are of this qualification, you will never step into the Lord will take you there in the name of Jesus. When he says it will make your enemy to be discovered to be lying. Is that whatever they have written against you that is detrimental to your destiny, whatever they have written against you that is contrary to your glory, the Lord will step out on your behalf and it will cause them to be reversed for you. Every judgment that is against your destiny, every judgment that is against your joy, every judgment that is against your life, the Lord shall step up and he shall reverse them in the name of Jesus. He will make your enemies to be found to be liars. He will make your enemies to be found to be liars. He will make your enemies to be found to be liars. That pain that you are feeling in your body, the Lord is going to make it to be a liar. That thing that wants to bedride you, the Lord will make it to be a liar. He that maketh the Lord his shield, the Lord will make that person's enemy to be a liar. The testimony shared with me of a lady that grew. She got married in her late forties, only for her to now begin to experience delay concerning conception. And everybody began to explain it biologically. This is the reason. And everywhere she goes to, they tell her the same thing. And one day she decided to make the Lord a shield. She decided to run to the Lord to protect her from the judgment of men. And when the Lord decided to make her enemies liars, the womb that they said can never have a child, first conception was quadrupled. Because we serve a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever think or imagine according to the power that is at work in us if you can dare to believe the lord by shouting hallelujah whatever your heart has desire in this week receive it in the name of jesus The sister that took the digging deep in our church shared this amazing testimony. Her husband works with FHA. And they started a building in their village. And the man that they called the father in her husband's family came at the foundation lane and planted half coin. Coin divided into two. And planted it in foundation. She didn't know. The house began, got to a point for 13 years it was stagnant. So one day she began to pray and in a dream, the Lord told her that your husband's so-called father at the foundation lane planted half coin that your husband saw it but didn't understand it. That he was telling your husband unknown to him that you will not have as little as half a coin to be able to finish this building. And she began to pray. And when she woke up, she would call her husband. The thing like this happened, say, yes, it's our culture. In my father's house, when they want to lay a foundation, they plant money. Say, what kind of money did he plant? Say, half coin, that's the way they divide it. Say, no, this is not an ordinary one. And say, she told her husband, go and tell that man that I give him four days, he's going to die. Brethren, to cut the long story short, because she cried to the Lord to be her shield, God took that man away. And after the Lord had removed that old man, the Lord turned the captivity around. The man that they said will never build a house, he pulled it down and within four, four months, what he could not do in 13 years, within four months, something bigger, something better, something grander is what the Lord do. As I am looking at you, my sister, as I am looking at you, my brother, there is a grace that is coming upon you. That 
to which men say you can never come into. I see from today before the end of this world, you shall come to something better, something bigger, something richer, something more glorious. In the name of Jesus. When a man makes the Lord his shield, the Lord makes sure he lives happy. When the Lord makes a man his shield, the Lord makes sure that he does not only live happy, but that this man, by the grace of the Lord, becomes incomparable. When the Lord makes, when, when a man makes the Lord his shield, the Lord makes his enemies to be found to be liars. Finally, that scripture says, when a man makes the Lord his shield, the Lord makes him to trample upon the high places of his enemies. I'm believing God with you, brethren, that because you are here, the power that are behind the problems you left behind, you are going back there now to ride upon their heads in the name of Jesus. The Lord makes them to ride upon their high places. The Lord will make you to ride upon the high places of your enemy. One last thing before we go. Who is that man that the Lord will consider in this meeting as a man that has made him his shield? Psalm 91 verse 1 tells us who that man is. He said he is the man that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God. He is the man that abides under the shadow of the almighty. He said the language of such a man is different from that of ordinary people. This is the kind of thing they say even when they are going through challenging times. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my strength. In the Lord I put my trust. That is the kind of man that the Lord will consider as having made him his shield. Two minutes. I want to believe that every one of you, and that's the last thing the Lord said I should do. Every one of you, there is a promise of God that you daily wake up expecting that today the lord will do it is there anybody like that you have a promise of god you know it very well right now thus said the lord to me in the early hour of this morning that i should give you two minutes to rise before him you want to kneel down you want to lie down and begin to say father let this your war let today be the day of his fulfillment and manifestation in my life i give you two minutes two minutes Two minutes. Make the Lord your shield. He is the one that opens his mouth and say of the Lord. He is the one that opens his mouth and say of the Lord. The Lord said you should say, what are those promises of the Lord? Go ahead and say, let the Lord bring to pass today this promise you have made unto me. Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Please raise up your hand, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commend this congregation unto you, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I commend them specifically unto your word of grace, for that is able to build them up. And that is able to give them as their inheritance. This their godly and righteous expectation. Therefore, beloved, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I say unto you, receive your expectations in Jesus' name. Once again, I say unto you, that which your mouth have mentioned in God's hearing in this meeting, in the mighty name of Jesus, by the grace of God, receive it in Jesus' name. As you step out of this auditorium, let it be unto you as it was unto Saul after he left somewhere. Let it be unto you as it was unto David after he left somewhere. 
let the forces of nature organize themselves and deliver into your hands even the things you have mentioned before the Lord today in Jesus' name. According to the season of life, when we shall gather next Wednesday, as surely as the Lord liveth, as surely as the word of the Lord is powerful, as surely as the grace of God is able to say, when this congregation shall gather next Wednesday, you shall have a testimony. Exceeding abundantly, above all you could ever think or imagine shall the power of the Lord cause to be done to you both by men by women by children by government and all forms of life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus wow.